Let me give you a quick rundown of cinematography. It's how the image on screen is constructed to communicate the tone, character, and story of whatever show or movie is taking place. Shows like Breaking Bad or Better Call Saul are extremely creative in their cinematography, utilizing color, composition, fixed camera angles, and many more. Better Call Saul in particular uses reflections and unique off-center framing that makes it stand out from any other show. But there are also shows like Succession that utilize handheld camera work to provide a completely different identity. Barry, on the other hand, utilizes long takes, wides, and a lot of center framing. In the action scenes specifically, the camera remains wide and still. Although at first it may seem counterintuitive, especially for action scenes, it proves to be some of the most creative choices that I've seen. So taking a look at the pilot, the first real gunfight cuts between Barry and the sniper. Now if you are filming this scene and you want to communicate a sense of danger or death, you might shoot it like this. But in Barry, this happens. That action scene has stayed with me ever since I saw it four years ago because it broke so many of the conventions that I was so used to seeing. The camera work was so meticulous and purposely observational. There are no flashy tricks, it stays extremely grounded, it feels like we're watching a real gunfight from someone who's extremely knowledgeable how to use a gun. I mean you can even see him grouping his shots through the windshield. The ending sequence in the diner is a perfect example of this type of camera work. Barry's interaction with the waitress and thoughts about becoming an actor are framed in front of the backdrop of the police lights that are a result of the people Barry just killed. So in the first episode, Barry is telling someone he's an actor, self-satisfied he's building a new life for himself, while simultaneously his actual job and its consequences light up his face. Ignored, but always present. This action scene is the perfect embodiment of how far the show has come, not only in terms of its action, but its creativity in presenting those action sequences. Like I discussed earlier, instead of following genre conventions, Barry aims to stand out. The take starts following Hank and his goons setting up the rocket, and because they have the element of surprise, they are in the power position. The decision to have all of that action play out in a wide, dozens of feet away is a perfect representation of the quirkiness and almost realness of the violence taking place. Violence occurring doesn't automatically mean it's suddenly all about the individual. It plays out on a grand scale and doesn't distinguish who is winning or losing. I talked earlier about the camera's location essentially being in the power position. Well, that power has transitioned from Hank's element of surprise to Fuchs's. In the series, Fuchs has essentially been the goofy, malicious mirror to Barry. Whereas Barry repeatedly attempts to change and convince himself he's a good person, even despite falling back into his old ways, especially when he's angry, Fuchs is much less combat capable than Barry, but is much better at manipulating, lying, and saying anything he, to get what he wants. He, like Barry, lets his anger consume him. Why do you care? I don't care! Well, you obviously fucking care, you called me! You called me! But instead of expressing it through physical violence, he mentally tortures those he deems deserve it. But up until this moment, Fuchs has always convinced other people to do the dirty work for him. Be it Barry, a grieving mother and son, a father, or a wife, most of which weren't even violent to begin with. Die, you motherfucker! But now we see that his time in prison, accepting the Raven identity, he utilizes a much bigger and more experienced group of individuals. Before this, we saw him get drunk, and on my first watch, I assumed that he was still the same old Fuchs, but with a tougher exterior. Then we saw the heads he sent back to Hank's office, and now we see Fugues dominating both the frame and any attempt that Hank tries to make on his life. And we see his men coming from the bushes almost as if he has an unlimited supply. He watches from the literal high ground as Hank falls down deeper and deeper. Here Fugues is fully established as a legitimate threat and the framing of the shot perfectly communicates it. Fugues is literally watching Hank like he's a king watching pawns fight on the battlefield. He no longer needs to worry about if he's in danger. He is the danger. 
And yet, despite all of the darkness, the scene is also one of the funniest. Hearing Hank's reactions through the phone provides a sense of voyeurism. You're still worried about his well-being, but it's hilarious to hear his fear and see his tiny figure running across the open area. The danger is real, but at the same time completely disconnected. The scene is able to keep the humor, tone, and unique brand of violence that the show has cultivated over the past three seasons.